that he is Lord. Oh, bless the Lord. How wonderful it is to be here on this wonderful Lord's Day. And we are so delighted that you would be able to come in and share with us today in person service. We welcome Second Mount Zion. We welcome Philadelphia and vicinity. We welcome folk across the country, and we welcome you if you are watching from around the world. How blessed we are, and I am so delighted. Let's see who has joined us today. Amen. Sister Vicki Parker, our Georgia Connection, has joined us all the way from Sylvania, Georgia. Amen. Delighted to see Sister Pamela Saunders all the way from Glenside, Pennsylvania. We are delighted that you would join us today. Amen. Deacon Daniel Johnson has joined us. Amen. Sister Brandy Stafford has joined us all the way from Texas, amen. Deacon Charles Parker, all the way from Sylvania, Georgia, has joined us, amen. Sister Deborah Smith has joined us, amen. Sister Katori C. Green, all the way from Newcastle, Delaware, has joined us, amen. Sister Benetta Robinson Dawn, delighted to have you on board. Sister Diane Curtis has joined us, delighted to have you on board. Sister Mary L. Smith has joined us join us. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Gwendolyn McDowell, all the way from Rochester, New York. Good morning, Sister Marjorie Borden. You are on board. Good morning, Brother Claude Wells has joined us. Good morning, Sister Charity G has joined us. We are so delighted to have all of those persons who have joined us today and those persons who are, you are in person. We are delighted to see you this morning. And so at this time, amen, uh, amen, uh, Minister Anthony Stafford is going to make his way and give us our inv invocation. Let us stand. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hope. He is the King of glory. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for the blessing of this day. For this time, once again, you allow us to pray together. We thank you for lifting us up on today, Lord, and allowing us to gather here in your house and uh, on Facebook as well. We thank you, Lord God, for just being in our midst. And we ask this all the more, O oh Lord God, that you will strengthen us in you for this day's journey. Connect with us as we connect with you, connect with you, you connect with us, Lord God, and develop us all the more into who you would have us to be and allow it to be so that these things will give you glory and strengthen our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Come on, lift it up. Say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, he has done.
Amen. Let's just praise the Lord. Don't stop. Do you have a reason to praise him? Did you wake up this morning? Did you have breath? That's a reason to praise him. Amen. Good morning, good morning, and we welcome you to today's installation of the Sunday School Lesson. Our Sunday School Lesson this morning is going to be taken from Revelation, Revelation chapter 7, and we will look at verses 7 through, I'm sorry, 9 through 17, and our key verse will be the B portion of verse 14. Revelations chapter 9, verse 17. Uh, we ask that you would get, get yourselves to that book, the, the, the last book of the Bible. And uh, as you do that, let's just make some qu quick housekeeping notes. Um, we just want to remind you, and, and, and I'll be saying this a lot, um, that there is strictly no eating or drinking in the sanctuary. Amen. We ask that you would refrain from that, and we understand that if you have, if you just have to because of medical reasons or whatever, that you would just excuse yourself, go to the lobby and do that and come back, and the ushers will guide you back to your seat. Amen. But we want to keep this sanctuary looking beautiful. Amen. And so we ask that you would just abide by those little rules that we have. Amen. All right. So this, so let me see. For the last couple weeks, we were talking about what? What, what? what was our subject? Praise? Did somebody say praise? So we, we, and specifically, we were in the Psalms and we were talking about praise or call to praise God in the Psalms. We, talking, we were talking about uh, uh, when you come in uh, having a praise, amen, when you come in just not waiting for the praise and worship team to get you fired up, but that you have a praise within you. And we talked about some reasons for praising God, amen. And, 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 and those lessons in the Psalms will transition us into Revelation perfectly because let me ask a question. I'm going to ask a dumb question. How many want to go to heaven? Right? You just don't want to go today, but you want to go. I understand. Everybody wants to go to heaven, I'm going to assume, because that's why you're here. But let me ask another question. What do you think goes on in heaven? Praise. Praise. Right? How often, Vaughn? All day. So, Aaron, then I wonder why it is that sometimes we have a problem praising them just for two hours out of a seven-day week. Because what you should be doing is getting ready to, because everybody said they want to go to heaven. See, but I think some people, we have this concept of what heaven is, is that it's going to be some great vacation. <laughs> right? You get to heaven, it's just nice beach or whatever you like, if it's the mountains you like, and you just going to kick back and, you know, just chill. Right? But what goes on in heaven? What goes on? John, John gives us a good glimpse of what goes on in heaven when he pens or when, when the angel visits him and gives him a vision of revelation because he gets caught up and he gets a vision or a view of what heaven is and what he does is, and, and, and Revelation, you know, a lot of people kind of try to stay away from Revelation because the very name of Revelation is derived from the Greek word apocalyptic. So yes, there are some things, right, that's gonna happen that you might be afraid of, amen? But Revelation gives you a glimpse into what you, where you want to go, right? So somebody, let's look at uh, Revelation, let's look at Revelation uh, chapter 4, starting at, starting at verse 8. Somebody give me 8 through 11. Revelation 4, 8 through 11. This will give you a little glimpse 
of what you get yourself into. Because y'all did say the right answers today. But y'all say it today. All right, anybody? Amen. Verse 8 says, and they do not rest day or night saying, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty who is and is to come. They worshiped day and night. And we just asked you to come in here for an hour and a half now because, you know, we didn't shorten it up now. And worship for, give us a good 20 minutes. Because, you know, most of y'all just going to worship when the praise and worship get up. And then when, and then when the preachers start preaching, you're going to fall asleep. Amen. But, but, but you said you wanted to go to heaven. And when you get to heaven, it's going to be worship. So have you been practicing to go to heaven? Have you been practicing to go to heaven? Y'all don't got to answer that. It's, it's all right. It's all right. It can get quiet. But that's what's going to be, that's, that's, and John, John, and, and John is the writer of, of, of Revelation. He gets, and what is the book of Revelation? Revelation. So that means it does something. What does it do? It reveals, it reveals the identity of Christ. It means, Revelation means a revealing or an uncovering or an unveiling. Amen. And so you get this spiritual truth uh, 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 about Christ, about the sons of God, Romans 8, 9, uh, 8 19. Christ's incarnation and his glorious, glorious appearing in his second coming. So it's revelation reveals what was hidden in the Old Testament. He was hidden. Then he's revealed in the New Testament. And here you get the revelation. Now, now revelation, in order to understand it, there's there's a key to unlock it. Does anybody know what the key is? Does anybody know where the key to revelation is? If you're going to unlock it. Yeah. That's all right. I know they're rusty. They ain't been in, in person. And if you're online, you know, you can answer these in the comments. We, we, we encourage that. 119. Somebody get me 119. Let's read 119 and let's, 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 let's use the key. This will be our guide for Revelation as we will be in Revelation for a few more weeks. Come on. You got it. Read it. Mm-hmm. Write the things which are seen, right, past. And then what does it say? Write the things which are the church age. And what is the, what is the last one? The hereafter. The hereafter. Uh, so, so, so he gives you that in chapter 1. Then he gives you all the dispensations to the churches. And then when you get to 4 on, or the things that are to come. And since we're in 7, what? We got the things which are to come. Amen. So when we get to this seventh chapter, this seventh chapter is kind of a parenthesis in between when he's unveiling the seven seals and in between the six and the seven seals and the seals represent the calamity that would be unleashed on the world. And so the seals uh, 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 before he gets to the seventh seal and the trumpets, um, which gave notice to the corruption of arising churches is this, this, this seventh chapter kind of gives a little bit of a respite or comfort to folk. 
And so when, they, when you get this respite, it forms a parenthesis between them, and it also answers the, the, uh, the question in the, uh, in the, at the end of the sixth chapter. Somebody get me Revelation 6, I think it's 47. The last verse in Revelation 6. The last verse. Is that the last verse? All right, read it. Who, who shall be, he said the great day of the, something is coming, but who shall be able to withstand it? Verse chapter uh, seven will answer that question for us. Chapter seven will answer that question of who is able to withstand. So when we look at chapter seven, and it, it's interesting in that it will open up and it will denote the 144,000. And how is that number, does anybody know how that number comes about? Where do they get these 144,000 people? Let's see. The beginning of chapter seven, it lists this, this great company of folk. That's right. Aha. Different tribes, or, or what tribes? Now you said all 12, right? Is that true? 144 if it's what? Uh, 12,000? 12,000 is a seal? You get 144,000, right? However, when you read that, that's good, that's good arithmetic. Now that's good, he's good. However, when you read the Bible, there is one tribe that is left out that is not numbered in the 144. Does anybody know which tribe that is? There's one tribe that's omitted of this 144. Nope, he wasn't a tribe. the tribe of Dan, and they were left out because they were idolaters, amen? So they were left out. So when you get to Revelations, he says, after this, behold, lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations, kindred, people, and tongues, and what did they do? Stood before the throne, before the lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So that lets you know a couple things when you look at verse nine, is that one, when you get to heaven, there are gonna be various people that don't look like you. We're all, going. the things that have made us different here will, will bring us together. So it won't matter where you're black, white, whatever you are, what you have in common is that you wanted to go to heaven and you behave like a saint before you became a saint. And so when you get there, it won't matter if you're from down south, up north, out west coast, out east coast, it won't matter. Because it says, and all these people stood before, you'll have an opportunity to go before the throne. And you'll be, and it says, and clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And the palms represent victory. Remember when Jesus was coming in to Jerusalem and they were all singing Hosanna in the highest? And what did they have? Palms, palm sun. So palms indicate victory. And they crowd with a loud voice saying, salvation unto our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. Worship, worship. And are you, are you ready to worship? Have you been practicing? Because this is what happens in heaven. John gives you a good glimpse of what happens. Look at the angels and the elders stood about and fell before the throne in their faces, worshiping God. Again, worship. Worship is the key activity, which is, I hate to bust your bubble, but you're not going to be sitting on a beach on vacation. You're going to be doing some worship. 
you're going to be clapping your hands. You, and, 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 and I believe, Aaron, you know, when we get caught up and we get our new body, you know what's going to happen with my body? I'm going to get new vocal cords. <laughs> and you know what that means? I'm going to be able to sing. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm just going to practice in the shower, Aaron. I'm going to practice in the shower. Mm. Yeah, I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. But we, 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 we see the angels that worship God. The great multitude, we see the angels that worship God. And the elders come and they ask a question saying, who are these arranged in these white robes and where did they come from? Who are these people? Who are all these folk who are gathered around the throne? Which lets you know you get, a, you get an audience with the Father and the Son. And so the answer to the question is, that he answers is, he says, you know, these are those which came out of tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Came out of, has anybody had any tribulations? Has anybody had any problems this week? What John lets you know is that there's a greater reward for you. That yes, you will have, you shall suffer persecution. But if you stay the course of a believer, guess what? You shall come out of this tribulation. Not only shall you come out of it, but you shall be, and, and th this is kind of a, a weird statement because I don't know anywhere where red blood makes you pure white. Red blood, which is the blood of the lamb, which covers you, which covers you, amen, it makes you pure white. Ain't that something else? So now these folks who have come out of tribulation, who, who have suffered, now they are made white in the blood of the lamb. And now they're before the temple. Here it is again. They serve him day and night in his temple. Hmm. Now, sometimes we find, we find it hard to find somebody to serve five minutes in this temple. <laughs> Amen. But that's what you're going to do when you get to heaven. You're going to be doing some serving. So y'all think y'all going to get served. Y'all think y'all going to be on the beach and getting, you know, whatever y'all like to do on the beach. You know, but it ain't going to be that way. <laughs> it's going to be some worship. You're going to be serving. So why don't you start serving now? Why don't we start practicing about, because we, you all put your hands up or you all gave me that look like I want to go to heaven. I just don't want to go this morning, but I want to go. And where you're going, do you know what you're going to do? See, they know because they've been rehearsing. But do you know, do y'all know what y'all going to be doing? Singing and all day and all night, it said. Mm. Now, y'all can pull some all-nighters for some other stuff, but when it comes to heaven business, now you're going to have to pull some all-nighters. But you'll be glad because guess what? When you look back, you're going to say, I've been saved from out of the tribulation, the tribulation of COVID, the tribulation of cancer the tribulation of, of this crazy city. And so they, they stood before the throne. You get a, you, you, you don't have to go through anything. You don't have, you can get an audience with God the Father and the Son. Hmm, that should make you shout right there. But not only that, and not only did they get relief from their, tri their tribulation, it says that they shall hunger no more, no more thirsts. Neither shall the sunlight, the sunlight fall on them, nor any heat. Nothing will bother them. What does the psalmist say? Somebody get me Psalms 121. Let's start at verse 4. 
4 through 6. What does the psalmist say about this? Mm. the sun will not smite you he said the, in verse 7 says the Lord shall preserve you from all evil and here we have that promise being fulfilled now that the sun will not smite you that you won't that 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 it'll be just comfortable amen you won't you won't be oppressed and so not only will you be uh, uh, secure from tribulation not only will you not have to worry about food uh, or, or, or thirsty, but you won't have to worry about the elements. Because why? God, shall, didn't he say God shall supply all your, here he is now says, for the land which in the midst of the throne shall feed them, shall lead them into the living fountains of water and God shall wipe away tears from their eyes. The promise comes through. So you want to get to heaven. There's going to be some worship. But when you get to worship, all those stuff, God says, I'm going to wipe all, this, all those tears from your eyes. I'm going to lead you, and you'll have to worry no more. What does that mean? You ain't got to work nine to five. You ain't got to try to figure it out how you're going to pay the cable bill and buy groceries. He's going to take those worries right off of your mind. He's going to cure all those anxieties. Amen. But you have to do your duty here. So it starts here. And you can have a slice of heaven on earth here. But it starts right here. So we should be, we should be worshiping, getting ready to go to heaven. Because when we get there, we're going to be worshiping. And God will make all those promises come true. Amen? I guess so my question is, will you start rehearsing? But not just for five minutes. Not just for these, I can't say two hours because we won't have two hour service no more. But not for an hour, hour and a half that way. Not just on Sunday, but every day because it says that they rest not and they just say holy, holy all day. That's what the angels do and that's what you look to become. So let's start practicing. Amen. That's our Sunday school lesson for today. Next week, we will be in Revelation again. We'll be 11th chapter of Revelation. Uh, Revelation chapter 11, verses 15 through 19. Amen. At this time, we will have a selection from our praise and worship team. Worship.
Amen. And amen. Help them, Joanne. God is still good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generation. What a blessing it is. It's just a good time to be alive. And alive and in the Lord. Amen. It's, it's, it's so good to see so many of you. Amen. So many, uh, several of you that I have not seen. Amen. In a long time. Oh, bless the Lord. Uh, how, how wonderful it is. Amen. I think, I think we, we, we got by on last uh, month without celebrating October birthdays. And so what we need to do is celebrate October and November birthdays. Amen. And so if you were born in uh, October or November, amen. Why don't you stand and let us sing happy birthday to you. And um, oh, I, did not, I did not practice with the band, yet I, I was going to do it Stevie Wonder style. But uh, since I didn't practice, let's just do it the classic way. gonna give me that key that I sing in. I was just kidding. <laughs> Y'all help me out, quiet. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I will practice, I will practice, and, uh, and uh, you can, uh, you can, uh, amen, you can practice, and I will sing happy birthday to all the December folk for Christmas. How about that? Amen, 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 all right. Amen. There is a word, there is a word that's found in uh, the 32nd chapter of uh, the book of Genesis, Genesis 32, and uh, I want to begin reading at verse number 22, and there are some interesting verses. Listen, and he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed over the ford Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. And Jacob asked, saying, tell me your name, I pray. And he said, why is it that you asked about my name? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God's face to face and my life is preserved. 
Just as he crossed over Penuel, the sun rose on him, and he limped on his hip. Therefore, to this day, the children of Israel do not eat the muscle that shrink, which is on the hip socket, because he touched the socket of Jacob's hip in the muscle that shrank. Uh, verse number 26. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And I want to talk about blessings or burdens. Uh, all, all of us seek after God's blessings. But oftentimes, we are more burdened than we are blessed. And uh, God, God is more anxious to bestow his blessings upon us than we are ready to receive it. Because we take ourselves out of the position of being blessed by God. It, it, see, God does not lend his power and blessings to that, that which does not give him glory. I mean, I ain't talking about the regular blessings because everybody, everybody get the regular blessings. You know them regular blessings like rain and uh, 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 sunshine and and clothes and and houses. Uh, those, those are just regular blessings. I mean, every, even sinners get that. Uh, but but Jacob was after a special blessing and uh, in fact about it. If you read the 25th chapter of Genesis, you will discover that it was already prophesied that Jacob would receive the chief blessing. He was in line to receive the chief blessing, but, but because of his behavior, he blocked his blessing. And his blessing was delayed for 21 years. I, I, I'm talking to somebody this morning. I'm talking to somebody who's, 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 who are in line for a blessing, but for some reason your blessings are being blocked. And, and you are burdened rather than being blessed. You know it's a burden for some folk just to show up. And it may be that there is something or somebody that's blocking your blessing. You remember, you remember in the 28th chapter when Jacob, when Jacob got saved, in other words, he became a believer. He, be, he, he had his first encounter with God because he grew up in his father Isaac's house and, and he, he knew about his father Abraham and God intervened on Jacob. Uh, 21 years ago, and Jacob, you remember when Jacob saw the ladder? That's when he got saved. And, and God affirmed his blessings, Minister Stafford. He affirmed the blessings that Jacob was going to get. And Jacob vowed a vow that if you're going to do this for me and bring me back to my father's house in peace, I will surely give you a tenth of all that I have. Big deal, Jacob. You're going to give God 
a tenth of what God has given to you. I think I agree with that. I think I agree with the writer of the writer of uh, uh, Chronicles. He says, "Whatever I have of thine own, I've given unto you." And so I ought to willingly be give, able to give to the Lord because first of all, He has given unto me. In fact, about it, I said on last week, Jacob deserved nothing, but God gave him everything. Yeah, and when you look at this text, when you look at when you look at chapter thirty-two, it prepares Jacob to meet Esau. Because you know the reason he left, he had to leave because he'd done his brother wrong. He had stolen his brother's birthright. He had stolen the blessing that was coming to him anyway. But he got in the way. And how often it is that we get in the way of God's blessing us. God is anxious to bless us. But we want to do it our way. You cannot get God's blessing, his chief blessing. You've got to do it God's way if you want God's blessings. And God had to remind him. God had to remind him, it's time to return back to your home. But he was burdened with his uncle because his uncle had deceived him ten times. And I stopped by to tell somebody today that what goes around comes around. He had deceived a dying father one time, but his uncle deceived him ten times. But guess what? That night when Jacob got saved, he saw angels ascending and descending. Those angels was with him. See, God is with you even when you can't trace him. Even when you can't see him, God's got his guarding angels all around you. Protecting you by day and by night. And that's what the old folk used to say. They used to say, to, they say, used, used to say, thank you, Lord, for protecting me by day and by night. The angels were with Jacob all of the time. And Jacob was being blessed by God even when he did not know it. Because of his trickery and cunningness, and he ran into somebody who was more cunning that he was, and that was Uncle Laban. But, but the angels of God was watching him and with him, and they allowed him to be prosperous. He left home with nothing, but now he's coming back home rich. The angels allowed him to be prosperous, and now Laban and his sons are jealous of Jacob. My brothers and my sisters, when some folk are jealous of you and they hate you just because God bless you. God blessed Jacob with cattle and herds and flock and uh, yeah. And now he's on his way back home. He, when God spoke to Jacob after Jacob was being burdened so trying to figure out how to outwit Uncle Laman, this brother was glad. He was glad that God intervened and God said it's time to go back home. He was glad. Hey, sometimes God allows us to get in a position and we're glad to come back home. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and Jacob, and this, this, this 32nd chapter, it starts out with, and Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. The angels of God never left Jacob. And when you are saved, the angels of God, and I told you, whenever the angel of God or the spirit of God, they are one and the same. They are used interchangeably. When you are saved, you've got the spirit of God with you all the time. You may grieve the Holy Spirit, 
You may quench the Holy Spirit, but he is with you to protect you by day and by night. And Jacob saw them and he said, this is God's camp. He recognized the angels as God's camp. In other words, and he called the place Mahayanim, which means now there are two camps. I got my camp and God got his. Then, then Jacob sent messages because the closer Jacob got to Canaan, because he remembered now, he remembered that, that God, God, God told him, I'm going to take you and bring you back to this land in peace to your father's house. In other, in other words, I'm going to bring you back to Canaan. But he got in Haran and he forgot what he told God. And God had to remind him that it's time to go back home and how glad he was to go home to get out from under the burden of Uncle Laban. But the closer he got to Canaan, his past gets a hold to him. His past gets a hold to him because he remembered now. He remembered how I left. I left running for my life. I left with Esau's wrath. Esau has threatened to kill me, and now I got to go back to the place that I left running because Esau has threatened to kill me. And so he sent messengers to Esau. And uh, I mean, when, when you get saved, you don't get rid of all of it overnight. And that's for all them folk who say, and you're supposed to be a preacher too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they hold you to a higher standard than they are, they are willing to live themselves. They'll find every fault with you and never look at themselves. Well, 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 well I came, when I came to the Lord, I had some baggage. And I ain't got rid of it, all of it yet. I'm, I, you, know, I, you, know, you know, I don't carry a book, big suitcase no more. But I still got an overnight bag. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of the old stuff. And every now and then. I have to say, Lord, keep my mind clear. <laughs> because part of the old baggage is still there. Listen, to, look at Jacob. Look at, look at Jacob. He said, speak to my Lord Esau. All of a sudden, now he calls Esau Lord. And, uh, and, and tell, tell, my, tell my Lord Esau, he, he, he said, that, that your servant Jacob has dwelt with Laman. And I got, I got donkeys and... and uh, and I got, I got oxen, and, and I got flock, and I got male servants, and men servants, and you, you know, I'm a, I'm a man of means now. I got, I, I, I got, I got some stuff. And, and they went and told the messengers to return to Jacob and said, and your brother Esau, he's coming to meet you, but he got 400 men with him. And uh, when you look at verse 7, it says, and Jacob was greatly afraid. Why does he fear? Spirit-filled person, why are you scared? Why does you fear? It may be that, that, that there is something in your past that you have not dealt with. And that frightens him because he remembers how he left Esau. And then this brother starts scheming again. I told you he ain't got rid of all of it yet. He might got rid of a whole lot of it, but he still got some of it. He starts scheming, and uh, and and, and uh, he divided he 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 divided the herds and the camels into two companies. Yeah. And he said, if Esau come and smite the one company and attack it, the other will be left and we will be able to escape. He put Leah and her children up front and Rachel and her children behind. The brother is still scheming. 
but he does what every carnal person does. When negotiations break down, when, you, when stuff don't work the way you think it, it's going to work, and you done figured out stuff, when it breaks down, then you, then you remember to pray. He ain't prayed in 21 years. And now he, he prays. It's right there in verse 9. It says, and Jacob, Jacob, he, call, he tries, Minister Brown, in accessory prayer. Look, listen at this brother Jacob now. You wouldn't think, since he hadn't been to church school and Bible study and all that stuff, he said, oh Lord, my father Abraham and the God of my father Isaac, verse 9, the Lord who said to me, and now he blames the Lord for his problems. The, the Lord who said to me, return to your country and your family and you will deal with me there. In other words, if, Lord, if, if, if you hadn't have told me to come back, I wouldn't be burdened with the problems of Esau facing me right now. He, the, the brother prays. He prays the purpose of God. He said, God, you, you the one told me to return, that you was going to deal with me there. And uh, yeah, yeah. Not, not, not only does he praise the purpose of God, look, look what else. He prays the providence of God. Listen, listen to verse 10. He says, I am not worthy of the least of your mercies, and all the truth which you have shown your servant. In other words, I know I am not worthy, but look at me now. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. In other words, I left home with an overnight bag. But I come back, now I have become two companies. That's the providence of God. And now he prays, he does, and, and, and actually, actually, even though it's prayed by a carnal person, uh, but he's saved, it's a good prayer. It's a good prayer to use it as an outline. Not only does he pray God's purpose and God's providence, but he prays for God's protection. Yeah, yeah, listen, listen. He prays for God's protection, but, but, but he talks about the purpose and the providence of God before he gets to the protection of God. He said, deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother. Stick a pen in, deliver me from the hand of my brother. From the hand of Esau, I fear him, lest he come and attack me, the mother and the children. He pulls, he plays the family card. Not the children. <laughs> he come, at least, he said, Lord, you got to deliver me because he might come and smite the mother and the children. He's tugging on God's heartstrings. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for, for you say, I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the sands of the sea and cannot be numbered for multitude. Lord, if you're going to do all of this, then they, Esau can't harm my children because they are the next generation. Yes, and so he lodged there all night long and, and, uh, and he took what he had in his hand and presented to Esau 200 female goats. You know he's rich. Yes, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 milk, co milk camels, and, and their coats, 40 cows, 10 bullocks, 20 female donkeys, and 10 foals. He gives Esau 
in our day and time, he, Sandra, he gives him almost a million dollars of gifts. I mean, not, you can kind of see how wealthy he is now. He gives him almost a million dollars in, in gifts. And then he delivered them to the hand of, of his servant. Every drove itself and said to his servant, and, and what he does is he sends them over one by one, not one by one, but company by company. In other words, he sends all the camels, and then by the time Esau, and his idea is by the time Esau get used to that, then I'm gonna send, a, send some milk cows, and, and then by the time he, he's, in other words, he tries to placate what he thought was Esau's wrath. What he thought was Esau's wrath. And I'll overwhelm him with gifts and he'll forget all about how mad he is against me. But I stopped by to tell somebody today, if you're going to pursue God's blessings, not only have Jacob grown, but Esau, Sister Margie King, Esau has grown also. Esau ain't worried about Jacob. He ain't even thinking about Jacob. You ever been upset with a person and you so mad at that person, you walk into the room and the moment you see that person, you get all upset in your stomach and that person don't even know you're in the room. I stopped by to tell somebody today that Esau ain't your problem. You burdened down with the burdens of Esau and he have blocked your blessing. Esau ain't your problem. Well now pastor, if Esau ain't my problem, then what is my problem? I'm glad you asked. He arose that night and his two wives and his two female servants and 11 sons and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over what he had. There's a real word there for somebody. And Jacob sought solitude. He sought to be alone. Look at the text. Verse 24, it says, And Jacob was left alone. Alone. No wives, no children, no gifts, no wealth. The brother is left alone. If this pandemic did not teach us anything, but it has taught us that there are some things that you can do without. Not only are there some things that you can do without, there are some people that you can do without. God, through a pandemic, has taught us that there are some things and some people that you can do without. I am concerned that after this pandemic, that we're going to go back to try to do it, the same thing we've been doing. Jacob sought solitude and he was left alone. And the Bible says that a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. And that, let me just run ahead of myself and say that man was the Lord. Yes. 
the angel of the Lord can transform into a man. You remember the three men or the three angels that came to meet with Abraham, his granddaddy. This, this angel, this man that wrestled with him is nothing more than the pre-incarnated Christ. He wrestled with him, and, uh, and when he wrestled with him, the text said he wrestled with him all night long. All night, that's a long time to wrestle. God, God was not judging Jacob. Deacon Harold, he was testing Jacob. He was testing his stamina. And Jacob says, I ain't gonna turn loose until you bless me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I may be, I, my, my thigh might be out of joint. I might, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, my thigh might be dislocated, but, but I'm not going to turn loose till you bless me. In other words, I'm going to hang in there. How about hang in there? He was testing the stamina to see if you can hang in there. Because if you can't hang in there, maybe you can't deal with your Esau's. Even though your Esau ain't thinking about you, you still can't deal with him if you can't if you can't hold out. He's testing his stamina. See if he gonna hang in there. See if he gonna keep on worshiping Deacon Simpson. If he gonna, if, if you gonna keep on worshiping and and, and see, and when you talk about worship, you, you, you know, I know you said, you know, we can barely worship two hours. Worship is a lifestyle. You ought to be worshiping even when you leave here. Jacob's problem was he had an attitude of self-reliance. He relied on himself. And anybody who has an attitude of self-reliance, you blocking your blessings. I don't need nobody. I don't need them, I mean, uh, I go and I get a word and I leave. I don't need nobody. Self-reliance. You, 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 you blocking your blessings. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket against him. He touched the socket of his hips, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint, and he wrestled with him. In spite of the fact that he had difficulty, he still hung on hung in there. In spite of the fact that 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 he would he, he he had some difficult in 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 pursuing God's blessing, he said, I'm not gonna let you go till you bless me. Yeah. That's the sovereignty of God. I'm not going to stop coming to church school, not going to come stop worshiping, not going to stop coming to Bible study. God tests your stamina to see if you can deal with everyday run-of-the-mill stuff in life. Jeremiah 12 and 5 said, that if you run with ordinary footmen, what you going to do if I throw you in the race with a horse who got, who got four legs? Jacob says, I'm not, he says, let, the, the, the man says to Jacob, let me go the day break it, but he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I can't, I can't stand up, because now my self-reliance has been broken. Yeah. 
good God Almighty. Somebody here today, before God can bless you, he got to break you. I said, he got to break you. I'm going back home now. You know, down in the country, Sister Henrietta, before you can get the blessings of a horse to use him domestically, you got to break his spirit. Because he just keeps bucking and bucking and bucking and bucking. Every time you get on him, you can't ride him. He's just bucking and bucking and bucking and bucking and bucking and bucking. And finally, you break his spirit. Now you can hook him up to a plow. Now you can hook a chariot up to him. And now you can ride him for pleasure. But you can't do that until you break him. God couldn't, break, God couldn't bless Jacob until he break him. He had to break his spirit of self-reliance. Because some, because up until now, it was all about Jacob. Jacob had to be number one. Jacob had to master every situation and everybody that he came in contact with. But finally, he met the master. And the master broke his spirit of self-reliance. And God broke him where his strength really are. You know where a man's strength is? It's in his loins area. In other words, that's where life flows from. From the loins. And so he broke him where he was the strongest. Good God of mine. I'm talking to somebody. See, Jacob met the Lord and Jacob was much alive and when I say alive he was alive in the flesh and God broke that flesh broke it so broke it down and he was so weak he couldn't even stand up what's 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 my point God was teaching Jacob that you got to learn how, if you want to be blessed, you got to learn how to lean on me. You got to learn how to, you got to learn how to trust me, not trust your own strength. Jacob could no longer trust his strength. Who was it that saying, uh, lean on me? When you're not strong, you're going to need somebody to lean on. I stopped out to tell you today that you're going to need the Lord to lean on. Leaning on the Lord. Now, Jacob, you strong. Apostle Paul says, in my weakness, that's when I'm strong. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then Jacob says, the Lord, the Lord says to Jacob, Jacob says, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said, what is your name? The last time somebody asked Jacob, what is your name? He said, my name is Esau. And the Lord said, that's what's wrong with you. What's wrong with you is wrapped up into who you know yourself to be. That's what's wrong with you. That's how come you can't be blessed. Because you Jacob. You still manipulating. You still trickery. You still cunning. You still trying to have life your own way. That's what's wrong with you. But your name shall no longer be called Jacob, 
but you, your name shall be called Israel. Because, uh, yeah, you, you, you have struggled with God and men and prevail. In other words, if, if you prevailed, it's because God lets you prevail. God allowed Jacob to win. No wonder Jacob says, I don't deserve your mercies. I don't deserve what, what I have. But because of the grace of God, yeah, nighttime is a time of struggle. Pandemic is a time of struggle, a time to figure it out. God gives us time to figure out stuff. He gives us time to figure out that some stuff that we no longer need. There's some stuff that we no longer have to worry about. Jacob, Esau ain't your problem. Your problem is wrapped up in the who you know yourself to be. My name is Jacob. And some of us boast about the way I am. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. Yes. Nobody. I mean nobody. If it doesn't profit me, I don't want nothing to do with it. If it doesn't support me, it always seems to be about you. Whenever your blessings are blocked, it's always about you. And Jacob walks in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he didn't walk in. He limped in now. And then Jacob asked and said, tell me your name. And he said, if I bless you, you don't have to ask about my name. Yeah. You know, that's what, that's what I tell for all those folks talk about, you blessed by the best. If I'm blessed at all, it's blessed by the best. Yeah. Because only one person can bless me, and that is the Lord. Yeah. Or you can make me happy for a moment. You can give me a gift and I'll be happy for a little while, but when that gift is gone, then the happiness went out. Yeah. But when the Lord, I said, when the Lord bless you, can't nobody get your blessings that the Lord give you. Because the Lord, I said, the Lord had promised his mama, yeah, yeah, about 30 years ago that I'm going to bless you. Because I heard his mama, Rebecca, says, I've got, yeah, Lord, something wrong with me. And the Lord said, you've got two matter of nations in your womb. And said, the elder shall serve the younger. The blessing was already Jacob's. But Jacob got in the way of his own blessings and blocked God's blessings. And, and that's how come I like Jacob so much as a biblical character because you see Jacob at his worst and then you see him at his best. You've, you've struggled with God and you've struggled with man and you have prevailed. And he said he blessed him there and Jacob called the name of the place Peniah, for I've seen God face to face and my life is preserved. And just as he crossed over, yes Lord, the, the, uh, uh, the Jabbok, the next morning he limped 
on his hip, but he had spiritual stamina. Yeah, 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 Lord. And you know the reason that I know that he had spiritual stamina. You need to look at Hosea chapter 12. Hosea told us all about what happened to Jacob. Hosea 12, 4, and 5. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It says, yes, uh, he struggled with the angel and prevailed. Uh, he wept uh, and sought favor with him, and he found in him in Bethel, and there he spoke to us. Uh, yes, Lord, uh, and that is the Lord God of hope. Uh, the Lord uh, is his memorable name. And Jacob says, I'm not going to ever forget the Lord. I'm not going to forget how he blessed me. I'm not going to forget how I was struggling in vain. I'm not going to forget how I've been worrying about a whole lot of stuff that I had no business worrying about. For Esau ain't your problem. I stopped by to tell somebody today that Esau is not your problem. Your problem is you. Your problem is wrapped up in the, to who you know yourself to be. For I'm glad. I'm so glad. Haskins, I'm so glad that the angels in heaven done change my name. Hey, hey. I said, ain't my God all right. I said, won't he make a way for you? And won't he hold your hand? got a new name written down in glory and oh it's mine and I stopped by to tell somebody that you don't have to be burdened down but you need to release and surrender your all. Jacob surrendered everything he had. He surrendered his wives. He surrendered his children. He surrendered his wealth and gave it over to the Lord and the Lord blessed him. Hey, hey, ain't he all right? Ain't that what happened to Job? Job surrendered everything he had, and God blessed him with double. I stopped by to tell somebody today that if you really want to be best, blessed, get out of your own way. You're stumbling over your own feet. You're stumbling over your own thoughts. You're stumbling over your own ideas. You're stumbling over your own habits. Get out the way and let the Lord bless you. And I'm here to tell you, he'll bless you. I said, won't he do it? Is there anybody here who's ever been blessed by the Lord? I don't know how you feel about it. And I don't know who you talking about. But when I'm blessed, I'm blessed by the best. And the best is only Jesus Christ. He is the best because he took everything that evil had to offer. Hey, hey, and he died for the sin of the world. And when he died, they took him down off the cross and put him in a barbed grave. He is the best because he got up with all power in his hand. And the writer of Hebrews, he said that he is the best. He's better than Abraham. He's better than Isaac. He's better than Jacob. He's a better way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father except by me. Do you know him? Ain't he all right? Won't he pick you up? Won't he turn you around and plant your feet on a solid rock to stay? And you can go everywhere telling the whole world and I know Jesus and Jesus know me stop blocking your blessings most of the time it ain't other folk it's you Jacob was blocking his own blessings. 
Esau wasn't his problem. And if you go ahead and read chapter 33, when he finally meets Esau, Esau he ain't mentioned what you did to me 21 years ago. I've been let that stuff go. And somebody here today, you need to, you need to let some stuff go. I said the pandemic has taught us that there are some things and some people that you can do without. Jacob was left alone that night. But after the Lord broke his spirit of self-reliance, now he's able to let the burden of me meeting Esau go. And now the Lord can bless you. Sometimes we are pursuing God's blessings, holding up, harboring old stuff that we need to let go, that us stand upon our feet. The door of the church is open. The church membership, Christian discipleship, the opportunity is yours. God bless you. God bless you, my dear. Why don't you come? Give me a hand in fellowship, guard your heart in service. And for heaven, make a stop. Is there another? Is there another? You can come as a candidate for baptism. You can come by letter. Uh, you can come on your Christian experience. The opportunity is yours. And the invitation is extended to you, to you, and to you. God bless you.
Amen. Amen. And amen. God is still good. Amen. We thank God. We thank God. Amen. That sister Adrian Lewis have come. Is that still her name? Yeah. Yes. Amen. Sister Adrian Lewis. Hey, how, how wonderful it is and how delighted we are to have you uh, to come back to the Second Mount Zion Baptist Church. But this is, this is still amnesty season. And so all, all you need to do is that if you are a member of the Second Mount Zion Church, uh, before all you need to do is, amen, is make sure that you leave your footprints in the sand. In other words, that means that you just start paying up and you automatically restore it back. Amen. God bless you. We're delighted to have you. It was not even necessary for her to walk the aisles today, but she did. So we're glad that she did. Thank you so very much. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, during the pandemic, uh, many of us was out and many of us didn't come back. And so we are letting those who, we are allowing those who were members just to come on back and start pay, start you know, uh, as they would say down south, start paying up, and you are, and you are restored back. Amen. Amen. Everybody said a. Amen. Everybody said a. Everybody said a. Let us stand. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only one wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power. Let everybody say it. Go in peace and serve the Lord.